Hi everyone and welcome to episode 31 of Caroline Snips. My name is Caroline and I live in Scotland with my husband Ben and our dog Fela. Who's out with her dog Walker right now so maybe we'll see her at some point. I'm originally Danish but this year marks my 10th year of living in Scotland um, where I moved to study and then never left. Um, as usual, it has been a tiny tiny while since I was here but um, I did want to film in December because with the amount of Vlogmases and general sort of like Christmas content I always find it a little bit overwhelming and I think it's very easy for your content to get lost when you like me kind of post semi semi irregularly so that's why I've been gone um, for a little while. I did film um, here in January my 2024 2024, no, my, what I knit in 2023, if you'd like to see all the projects that I made in the last year. And today I am just going to talk through some of the stuff that's been going on on my needles. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to be brief today because some of my episodes in the past have been very long and I sometimes feel like I ramble more than necessary. I'm also sitting in the sun today because it is incredibly cold. Um, we actually have a little bit of snow sort of slowly melting outside. I want it to film in our bedroom but because it's like so cold outside if you don't have the direct sun the, the light is just really cold and gloomy so we're filming in the spare bedroom as usual. It's a slightly different setup so I'm excited to see what I think when I come to edit it but um, right as I said I'm just kind of going to talk about some of the things that are on my you know that I've kind of been knitting and thinking about my mojo is doing very very well so even though I feel like I've continued a slight hiatus um, from social media it's not because I haven't been knitting I don't know about anyone else but I've just kind of been struggling a little bit to think of content I feel like there's so many amazing content creators out there and I'm just not sure I have that level of creativity um, whether that comes to like video and video production or the sort of like reel making or really lovely beautiful finished garment shots so yeah I've just kind of not been inspired for that kind of content creation but I have been very inspired to knit regardless so I'm gonna start out with a podcast classic and talk about what I'm wearing I am currently wearing my jacket number one which is a pattern designed by my favourite thing, Snitwear. It's this all over textured cardigan um, with a double knit front band, um, front band, double knit button band, that's what it's called. Um, and I just have these like wooden buttons on them, which I might replace. I bought some while back home for Christmas. And um, it's going to be hard to show but I have not depilled it deliberately because I wanted to sort of talk about the yarn um so oh that's a long loose thread um all in all I have been wearing this cardigan so so much which I also think is why you do have some pilling I just find this probably the most wearable thing I have knit in a long time I love it for the home office like just one like this you know casually over, I'm just wearing a tank top underneath and I've worn it with long sleeve t-shirts um, now that it's winter and it's cold and I get cold in your home office this was one of the knits I brought home to Denmark for Christmas and I have this pair of like this sort of like a cool beige greyish trouser and it works so well with this and it's just a perfect like the, the trousers are a bit dressy and then this cardigan is like nice and oversized with the drop shoulder yeah this is a 10 out of 10 pattern for me it's not the quickest of knits because I certainly couldn't memorize the um like stitch pattern um so I did find that I was looking at the pattern quite a lot but I don't know I think it was still worth it because I think that texture to kind of just it kind of just adds something and I think these kind of oversized over the shoulder um, and also actually the double knit band like this it's very very fashionable at the moment you know there's lots of commercial um, fast fashion type versions of this and some high-end ones as well and yeah I just feel really trendy and cool when I wear it 
even though it is, as I said many a times, not the colour I would have chosen. I just have worn it so, so much. I did buy some other buttons that I need to sew on when I can be asked to take it off because it does have a slight gape here um, at the bottom button and I think it's just from as I got more comfortable doing the double knit band I think my gauge just ever so slightly changed and it just means that the buttons and the buttonholes aren't quite matched and I just need to recheck that. Um, I just brought some like plain matte black buttons um, that I can I can sew on um, because as much as I like these wooden ones I actually think I would prefer it with black but then I don't know how well I would go with this I don't know I think I'll sew them on but it's probably one of those that I bought the buttons and it'll still be like months before they get sewn on because I'm like I'm quite a, like once a project is finished I want to finish it right like I block it I wash it, like I weave in all the ends, I would sew on buttons, I do all those things, update the project page on Ravelry, but then afterwards if something needs changed it takes me forever to fix it and I reckon this might fall foul of it. The yarn is um, Filcolana Peruvian Highland Wool held with Filcolana Tilia. Both of these yarns I bought from Knit many many moons ago, um, probably over two years ago by now actually probably three. Um, so yeah, they've been in my stash a long time. And it's my first time knitting Filcolana Peruvian with Telia. And I really, really enjoy it, actually. I think it's like the right level fluffy. I do like how this is a little bit heavier. I think it suits this kind of garment. I can't remember what she recommends for the original one. Um, it might be Hillholt Wispin of these Hunwag scan, like one of those like really woolly wools. Um, the Danish one that you know they're all knitting in. Um, but I can't quite remember. I don't think she recommends Peruvian and Telia because I don't think she's been sponsored by Vilkalana for a long time. And so um yeah, it was a substitution, but I think it works really well. Um I knit everything to pattern actually. I don't think I changed anything. And I have clearly managed to have some loose threads. I'm very confused where you come from. Um, so yeah, I do find it's soft, it's comfortable, it's warm, it's all of those things. But I will say that this yarn, like, I do think this is one of my garments with the most amount of pilling. Now, I have also worn this loads. I finished it in time to take it to Lissy's wedding, where um, Lissy, or Hive Knits, um, in the end of November and I wore it loose then and it's basically you know had several several worse weeks since then but yeah there is quite a lot of pilling um so I don't know if I would pick it over a different combo I'm not sure because I do love it but I do think it pills I think the combination the closest thing I can sort of think of is um like what I would replace it with if I was knitting this I would probably have used heavy merino from knitting for olive and I do have garments knit in that combination of knitting for olive heavy merino and soft silk their soft silk mohair and I get no pilling like I have um my sweater number 23 I think it is it's like a great drop shoulder sweater also for my favorite things I haven't I'm not sure I've ever depilled it because it literally doesn't peel but it goes really soft over time so if I was to buy a yarn quantity and I could afford it, I'd probably go heavy merino, soft silk mohair kind of route. But Peruvian is cheaper, so yeah, I think it's kind of a balance. But I think I prefer garments that peel slightly less, and I feel like with the heavy merino, you are not giving up any of the softness either. So that's kind of my thoughts on the yarn. Speaking of the yarn, it ties into my next finished object, which I kind of spoke about the planning for last time this is my Celeste sweater pattern by Petite Knit it's this round yoke um colour work sweater with this kind of cowl neck and yeah um this I the main strand is also for Colonna Peruvian um but this has not been held with any strands and I've deliberately not like depilled it I will I will take some shots for you because if I don't say that in the video I probably won't <laughs> um, 
But yeah, this has peeled so, so much. I finished this. I brought this back to knit while in Denmark, where I did get a few centimetres on the body. And let me tell you, this has peeled so, so much. Like, considering this has now been finished for less than a month, and how worn it loads, like, it, it does get that credit. It has peeled so much. Like, the arms, like... It was basically from where one you started to be able to see the wear and even here on the front of the body you can kind of see where I've had like things rubbing on it and that kind of thing so yeah I don't know how highly I rate Caribbean held on its own however this is very lovely to wear the more I've worn it the more it's kind of gone soft I would say like it's never been itchy but it's definitely soft enough as I've worn it and for this colour was another one that's been in my stash for ages that I really struggled to think how I would knit up. And um, it's the colour Cinnamon. And I actually knit up in this because Cinnamon is this kind of like multicoloured, <clears throat> from the distance it's that kind of orangey brown, but closer up it does have quite a lot of like several tones to it. And I kind of didn't, I couldn't see myself wear garment just in that one colour but I had so much I had a garment's worth like it would have been a waste not to make a garment of it and I think in this it's just absolutely perfect because this brown colour I find really easy to wear with jeans um it has been very cold and I find or in my opinion colour work sweaters are perfect because it's kind of like the double the double layer of like um double layer of like yarn on the back of the yoke kind of keeps you nice and warm but you still like you, you don't have all the bulk of it and you could add even more layers on top so I've worn this like I don't think I want it to work yet but I definitely would um but I have worn this with um like for walks with a dog where I've worn my like thermo suit that I got for Christmas um I've worn this with like jeans for casual wear I've worn this with pajamas because it's just that kind of comfy but yeah fair warning that it does peel. The, the yoke colours are mostly stash, stash busting or on my stash. So um, when I chose the colours, I really, I did a swatch with my original plan um, while I was down for Lissy's wedding. And Sophie from the Knit Pearl Girl and I kind of looked at my colour choices and it just wasn't quite right. Um, with this pattern, from the different versions I've seen, I think you have to really think about having two colours that are incredibly contrasting. Um, if anyone's interested, I will happily let you know like what colours I chose to like in the diagram, because obviously you have several different colours. It is just two strands, two stranded colour work, so it's not hard at all, and the floats are really short, so I think it's quite accessible. But obviously it looks like it's much more difficult because there's so many colours. But um, I do think you need quite strong contrast. And the the bright cream white is actually um, Sandra's Pigint, which was kind of gifted to me by Mitt um, when Simona first started selling Sandra's. Sorry, that's a long time ago as well. Um, which I hadn't actually planned to put in this project. Um, but I just thought that contrast was really good. And the black was actually a ball that I was given by Simona who owns Knit when we were away for the wedding so it's sort of gifted but also sort of just a friend saying well I don't really need this ball of yarn you can have it and then um, that grey colour is um, Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino and then this green is from Hilhold Ulspinneri um, which is one um, my gran stashed to me and I've kind of struggled to know what to knit it up in and I really, really like it in this. I love the kind of green um, with that cinnamony colour. Um, for moderations, I didn't do all that many, but I did do one in the colour work, which is, I think this final colour, like this final row of colour work is actually meant to be the green. But I quite liked when I looked at other versions, when you had that high contrast, and especially when the colour work finishes on a high contrast, so I decided to replace it with the white, um, especially because the previous sort of colour work grow had quite a lot of black and that's quite a, that's very high contrast. 
um, the black I should say is also um, Peruvian. So I don't know if you can tell, um, but I think the gauge is pretty good. I did go up a full needle size um, to really keep my colour work loose because I, because I'm a continental knitter, I think I sometimes unintentionally can tighten, especially in colour work. More than usual, I find, I think continental it's easier to tighten in colour work than normal knitting because you're kind of tugging things and stuff. Um, so I've been really happy that I've done, that I did that because um, this is probably the neatest gauge I've ever had on colour work and the le like least amount of puckering. I still think you have some, but I'm still quite a novice colour work knitter, so I don't take that too close to heart. So yeah, I changed the final colour. And then for order by Novs, she recommends that you do like a tupia cast off, which means you do like a row of colour knitting or colour knitting, that you do a row of double knitting before you um, do the bind off. Now, I don't like when I do tubular knitting. It looks fine when other people do it. For me, I just never like how I do it. So I just did a standard Italian because that's my preferred. I think it looks good. The stretch is good. Yeah, um, I did do the Italian um, cast on or the tuba cast on, whatever it's called. Whatever you would do that kind of matches that um, rib. Um, I did do that for the neckline and when I wear it, I think here you can see it's kind of fallen out. When I wear it, I don't think it looks as sloppy as it kind of looks here. Um, I did wonder if I wanted to have like a folded neck band, but now that it's finished, I actually quite enjoy the, the high neck. Um, because I feel like this whole sweater just kind of screams, you know, that you're stylish, but that you're stylish, but you love nature. Um, so this has gone so much wear for me. And it's just, yeah, it's easy to style. What's really funny is, as I said, I brought this back to Denmark. My whole family saw this and was like, wow, you can make me one. And it's funny what kind of, like, because I think my whole family, if I would knit them something, I don't think any of them would say no. But there's something about, this particular sweater I think they will love. When I posted it on Instagram, I had three comments, um, like one one from my mum, one from my auntie and one from my sister, all like, can you send this to Denmark? And it's funny how I think this pattern in particular just seems to appeal even to non knitters because this is a pattern that got really popular and that loads of people have done. And so, yeah, I know it's not the most original choice to knit the Celeste sweater, but I do think Petite Knit did really well with the colour work. There is, obviously, uh, the one caveat that all of these colours leaves a lot of ends to even. But, you know, I just sat one evening and, like, was weaving in all the end while we went to Denmark, while we were chatting and stuff, and it was fine. Um, so, yeah, if you're curious, this is what my float side look like. I do like to catch my floats, um, even if the floats aren't very long just because I think it gives extra stretch in the in the knit and also I knew that I would probably knit the the mittens that she's released in this kind of style the Celeste mittens at some point and you would catch the floats so your fingers doesn't get stuck in them and I just thought I'd keep keep the practice up and I've mentioned it before but when I catch float in continental knitting um Usually when I knit colour work, I hold both strands on my finger like this and usually I would come in with my right needle and just go, well, yeah, right needle and just go over and grab this back strand so that the colour work or the dominant colour, you know, is underneath. But when I want to catch the float, I catch one underneath that um, and then the next time it kind of creates a natural twist when you then go back to catch um, the sort of main colour or the non-dominant colour again. So yes, I've spoken enough about this, but would recommend, I really enjoyed it. I would knit this pattern in again, um, and I would definitely also knit the mittens because it's just such an easy but effective colour work. And also I love that it's so stash busting, especially for the mittens. I'm planning to, to knit a few up this year and I do have quite a significant amount of Peruvian left, um, which might become, the cinnamon might become a Sophie scarf, but all the stuff I did the colour work for, I have plenty of yarn to make other projects with. And now that I've kind of established that I like it, that my gauge works fine, I think I could definitely see myself do 
um, use it all up for mittens and then give that away to my family members who wish they could get a full sweater but might have to live with mittens. The next thing um, I have finished is this. This is the Lower Lee Shore by um, Sari Nordlin and I'm just going to tie it. I unfortunately have knitted it just too short I think to tie it this way. At least I haven't tried it yet. Um, I think it would be just a little bit too tight. Maybe not actually. I did manage to tie it. Um, usually when I've worn it, I've worn it tied in the back just like in the front. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, full disclosure, this was yarn that was gifted to me by Knit. It is knit in Cardiff Cashmere Classic in this kind of greyish blue colour and it is an all over lace scarf with, which has cables on it. Um, it looks much more complicated when it is. Once I kind of got going on it, I didn't really struggle. And this is another pattern that I would make for friends and family again. Um, yeah, it's just really, really nice. Um, and it's repetitive enough that I think, you know, you don't, um, I wouldn't say you kind of memorize it, but you kind of get the gist of it. I just realized I made a mistake on this all the way down here made a mistake on the quarter edge. I made no other adjustments. I knitted it completely to pattern. I did go down, I think it's meant to be knitted on four millimeters. I was nervous of running out of yarn, so I went down to 3.75 and it has just worked up a tiny bit too small, even after an aggressive block. So if I was to knit it again, I would just buy an extra ball of yarn and knit it a little bit longer. Um, but I will say that the Cardiff is so warm like it's just a perfect kind of warmness it just it's not like something that makes you like hot and sweaty but it's like like a hot water bottle kind of warmth and especially now when it's been really cold this is so comfy and I think I'll get a lot of wear out, wear out with it especially because it's nice and small so I could also wear it out for walks the color is very nice I only used about a ball and a half of Cardiff Cashmere classic which I wouldn't say it's affordable, but for a cashmere scarf, I think it's pretty affordable. Um, and you could knit this, I think Sari Nordlin recommends one ball of knitting full of merino and one ball of soft silk in my hair. So I thought I'd flag this because I actually think this would be a perfect gift, gift knit if you want something that is a little bit fancier for someone where the effort is more put into like the time it takes to work up an accessory, um, maybe for someone who is a little bit dressy. But where you can keep the yarn costs down or you could stash busk if you had one ball of fingering or one ball of, and one ball of soft silk in my hair. So that is that. Um, and that's the project stuff finished since last time, which no, that's not true. I did finish one more project. I finished um, a Sophie scarf in black for my sister, which I knitted in um, Alpaca Silke from Sandness. I bought this in Denmark. My sister picked the yarn. Um, because she really wanted one of those small Sophie scarf styles and I said I'd be happy to knit it for her but as she's not a knitter I was like I want you to pick the yarn because I don't want to knit a full scarf in yarn that you don't like wearing and also she wanted black so this isn't like a true true black it's very very dark charcoal I would say but it looks black enough and it's very very soft I bought way too much I didn't even use a full ball um so I bought two balls just in case um, for the bigger size of the Sophie scarf as well. Made no other adjustments, knitted it on the same needle size. Um, but I might make one for myself, double strand. Um, this is very soft. Um, just to, to use up this yarn because I bought it specifically for this purpose. But just a little tip. So that's the final thing I've sort of finished. I do have one half finished object where I'm not going to go in too many details. But I thought I'd flag it because... The pattern is free on Ravelry, as it's been really cold, maybe other people wanting to knit warm socks. So this is one finished sock, but unblocked, of the Fan Rem socks, which I will link down below. They are, um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's a DK weight sock with a small colourwork pattern. I used Sandness Smart, which is Sandness's DK weight sock yarn on the main part of the foot. 
which was kindly gifted by Simona many moons ago. And then my contrast colour is Fulcolana Peruvian in Merlot, which I just think they're so, so lovely. I did accidentally knit these, like they're meant to be knitted on like three and a half, like three and a half millimetres. I knitted this on 225s. I'm not really sure how I, well, I do know how I did it. It's because I have um, a three millimetre needle that is loose um, or like fixed because I find that the very small Tiago needles, they tend to like unwind themselves. So I accidentally pulled it out and cast it on on the 225, not checking the size, just assuming it was my uh, fixed three millimetres. And so these are incredibly dense. I don't know if you can really tell, but like these don't have a lot of give. I can, however, get them on my foot. It's a bit hard by the colour work, but it's definitely doable. And I'm kind of hoping that these very tight gauge, you know, knitting DK weight on 2.25 is going to give you a tight gauge. It's just going to make for some really, really great boot socks, especially, or like much more hard wearing socks, especially because Sam is smart, does have nylon in it um so yeah but I thought I'd flag it because I think they're really cute I did make a short row heel because it's my favorite type of heel it's my favorite fit so that's what I did and to finish off I'm just going to show two acquisitions I do have another project on the go another whip but I'm going to talk about that next time when I was down for Lissy's wedding um me and the knit group um had booked a cottage where we stayed, had lots of knitting time and really enjoyed ourselves. The, the wedding was absolutely amazing. I cried so many times. It was beautiful. It was perfect. It felt so incredibly Lissy and P and yeah, best time ever. Um, the day after the wedding, when um, Simona, who owns it, had headed back early in the morning on the mo Monday after the wedding, but um, me, Sophie from the Knit Pearl Girl and Laura from Penrose Knits, um, we had an extra day because I had made the suggestion that no one likes to get up and leave a place while they're incredibly hungover. So I suggested that we stay another day, which we did, and we went into um, Lancaster. It was Lancaster, right? I think so. Um, and there was a really lovely yarn shop that I actually had heard of before called Northern Yarns and we spent probably about 45 minutes touching every single ball of yarn in that shop. Now I was conscious that I am still on this mission to not buy lots of yarn. I am slowly but surely actually seeing a decrease in my yarn drawers and I don't want to stop that. It's not that visible, but I, I can close the drawers more easily now, but I'm still wanting to work through the stash. However, I did I did want a souvenir yarn and I am very much in a phase of my life where the main thing I'm doing is spending time outside with the dog, being very, very cold. So in the end, the yarn I ended up choosing um, to buy uh, sweaters quantity of, so I think I have six games. It's the West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece. It's 100% British wool and it's a Jacob wool. And this is a DK weight wool, which the it says it should give me 22 stitches to 28 rows. So like perfect um, DK weight. It's obviously red, sheared and spun in Britain. So it's truly 100% British wool. And Northern Yarn as a shop is very much a shop. Um, she sold lots of like local yarns, really beautiful like British breed yarns and um if it wasn't because i didn't i feel like it was quite the right time just before christmas to spend a massive amount on um like a sweater's quantity because the the fleece is fairly affordable um i could have easily bought 10 sweaters quantities worth um she also has a brilliant website um i just yeah really enjoyed it um, but I ended up going for the Jacob yarn because I thought it would be a good choice for like a hard wearing outdoorsy garment. You know, one that I do wear on dog walks, etc. I decided to go for brown black, which is this beautiful, very, very dark brown with, I don't know if you can see, but it has lots of fluff hairs. Um, after coming home, I wasn't quite sure what this was going to become. I thought DK weight was a good choice. 
I actually kind of wish I'd gone, gone for Erin weight now, um, but I didn't, so I now have a DK weight. I kind of am wondering if I should knit a DK weight colourwork sweater, because the Jacob Fleece also comes in this creamy colour, and I feel like that could actually go quite well with this. Um, and when I looked up on Ravelry, that seems to be mainly what people have knit this up into. But if you do have any suggestions of that kind of garment, like this is rustic and it does smell very, very sheepy. Um, holding it up here, like it's not immediately itchy to me, all things considered. Like, I guess when I first started knitting, I would never pick the yarn like this because I would have been certain it would be way, way, way too itchy. But actually, I don't think it will be. Um, so yeah, I need to figure out what this is to become and I'd quite like to knit it up this winter. I've also wondered if I should just knit like a semper sweater, like a very simple, not basic, but very simple like classic design. But yeah, any feedback on what you would knit this up with because to make a colour work sweater I'd only need to buy two more skeins probably of the Jacob Fleece. And I feel like Sari Nordland especially has some DK weight um, colour work sweaters that might be quite nice. But yeah, suggestions received. Now in a completely other end of yarns and softness and all this, um, I thought I'd show you my way too generous Christmas present from Simona, which is the Cardiff Cashmere Brush Light. This is um, an 82% cashmere, 18% silk. Um, I don't know if they actually give a gauge on this or what it could be knit up to. It does say it's meant for needle size three and a half to four and a half. 25 grams runs 138 meters. So I would call this, well, I guess it's technically a sports weight. Like I wouldn't call this a full DK weight if I compare these two. Certainly I think if you knitted this up at a DK weight, you would get a very flighty loose garment. Um, she bought, oh, well, she gave me a sweater's quantity of this. It's actually a very similar colour to Lai uh, Lawalu shawl, but um, this is Cardiff Clas Classic, um, which is 100% cashmere and this does have silk in it, and it's kind of a little bit more fussy. It's incredibly generous. It just, like, arrived one day, and I squealed when I saw it. Um, so I have a sweater's quantity of it. I have eight balls, which, um, meterage-wise, should give me a DK weight garment, especially if I hold something with it. I just also don't know quite what this is to become. I think I've decided that because this yarn is so incredibly special, like cashmere is such a special fibre, um, it's just, when you touch it, it just feels warm. Like it just, it's so beautifully, like it's just such a beautiful yarn. I think I've decided that I might splurge on some matching my hair with this and this my head I haven't bought a sweater's quantity of for a long time because in like my peak yarn buying days I definitely bought nice yarns you know when I bought yarns you know like a sweater's quantity of this but I think I thought that um Isair silk my hair was too expensive but it is my favourite my hair that I work with so far but it's been such a long time I wonder if I'd still feel the same so I've considered buying a sweater's quantity of ECR silk my hair to hold with this to create a very light floaty DK weight garment. I will definitely go for something classic, maybe the Pippin cardigan from the Knit Pearl Girl or something else that can kind of stand the test of time and is as like it's more classic than trendy. It's just so beautiful so I thought I'd mention it. But again both of these, any suggestions? <laughs> And that is all, um, as everything I've written down on my list for today, because I knew I would otherwise be really scatterbrained. And um, we've now reached the like personal chat um, part of it. Um, and there's not really much to update on with my life, because life has just been plodding along in the best way possible. I've been really busy with work. I'm actually way too busy at work to film today at lunchtime. But I booked a dog in for dog walk. I was meant to be in the office, but didn't need to anyway, and just decided that I was going to film instead. Um, but 
I feel like in my personal life things have been really good. It was amazing to see my family over Christmas and to spend some quality time with them. I'm feeling so inspired by knitting. I'm slowly going back to CrossFit, doing all of these things and I mentioned it last time but I really feel like like winters are always hard, right? Because winters are long, they're cold, they're dark. Um, they can feel a little bit relentless at times, but considering it's just been winter, I'm doing very well. And I'm very excited to knit some more. Phil and I are still, I've still been out competing. So I've been incredibly cold. I actually think that might be her being dropped off now. Um, so I think that's also why I'm feeling so much like knitting because I have worn my knits more than ever. And, um, and yeah, it kind of feels nice to not have lots of bad mental things to bring up. I've still been reading um, and listening to audiobooks especially. I've, I've really been enjoying audiobooks. I'm currently listening to the second book of Fourth Wing, which I can't remember what it's called now, but it's very, very good. I'm enjoying it. And yeah, that's kind of me. I would love to hear how you're doing, how you're getting on, what your big plans are for 2024. And I hope it will be not as long till I see you again and I'll have more projects to show. Hi! Hi! Oh, you're so cute! You're so sweet! Hi! Did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? Are you a good girl? Are you a good girl? Good girl! Perfect timing! Here you are. Can you give a wee? Can you say hello? Can you give a wee? <laughs> right, proper goodbye now. Bye. Bye.